Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, from your favorite real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And this morning, I'm privileged, honored, excited, because he's not surfing, he's not playing basketball, he's not drinking any kind of weird, green, healthy drink, and he's not in jail. Duran Frazier! Wow. How are you, my friend? Wow. You know what? You're talking about from a, from a position of being, uh, you know, I've never, the, the whole jail aspect, I, I mean, I, other than being there last night, I've never been there before. So, um, so anyway, but um, never convicted. Never, never convicted. So uh, maybe in my heart, I'm convicted, but not, uh, you know. Otherwise, no. So, um, Mark, you know, I think we should stop stop introducing me like that because it's not that cool anymore. You know, I do appreciate should I, that. Should I, uh, switch it up. Yeah, I'd just be like, you know what? I got. I'm not stoked because today I got Duran. Okay, I'll just like that. Let's redo the intro. Okay. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky with The Land Geek, thelandgeek.com. Today I have Duran. Perfect. And I'm not that stoked about it. Per- perfect. Perfect. Um, you know, I like, I like that a lot. The, mo- the monotone voice, too. So that's, that's always good. Yeah. Yeah. How about, yeah, just a, just a pure lack of enthusiasm for the podcast and the listeners. Exactly. Exactly. So um, it's kind of like an, like an NPR show. Yeah, it's just super boring. You know, we talk about like, <laughs> you know, how do you feel today? I'm great. Thank you. I'm great. Thank you for asking. Yeah, I love uh, I love those SNL skits like with Alec Baldwin. You know, what I'm talking about. Uh, no, but sure. Yeah, well, never mind. Okay, <laughs> so let's not get off topic here. Okay. So what's going on in the world in the world of Duran and real estate and making money? What do you got uh, for me today? You know, I've been planning out a very. It's funny because you just don't when you have children, you don't realize. And again, for, from a structure standpoint, I've never had it, never really liked structure. Um, and when I say that, I mean structure saying that I need to be, you know, I need to be at a, at a certain place for six months. I can't leave. It's like jail, right? Well, I feel like my kid going to school is like jail for me because it means, generally speaking, that I can't really take the family and do the things I used to do because my son's going to school now. So it's a bit of a bummer. And uh, and now that summer's coming, I've got a kind of a busy schedule plan. So uh, I've just booked. I've got, in fact, uh, we've got your your event at the end of May, and then I think I come home, and then three days later I fly to Florida for ten days, and uh, and then, gosh, we've got a uh, Lake Tahoe trip uh, in between. I think June and July, and then I think I've got another flight out to August somewhere. Who knows? I don't know where anymore. So just got a busy schedule planning for summertime, but uh, you know everything's. You know, just plugging away. I've got uh, the mining project is coming together, which is, uh, you know, every day is getting better, which is great. So how about you, Mark? Yeah, I'm, I'm busy planning for Vegas. So uh, I should have a link today to send out people to book their rooms. Again, it's uh, free for people that own the Investor's Toolkit. If you don't own the Investor's Toolkit, uh, tickets are starting, uh, two tickets, by the way, are starting at 497 So it's going to be a great event. Don't miss it. We're going to go over everything. Due diligence, right? Deal flow, marketing, copywriting, VA management, mindset sessions, mastermind sessions, networking, and of course, the open bar. But we're going to go into a lot of detail with a lot of different things and tons of Q&A. Everyone has questions. Everyone has questions. You just need answers. Yeah. We're going to provide those answers. And uh, maybe we'll even do a podcast at the live event. That'll be fun. All sponsored by Land Hub. All sponsored by Land Hub. <laughs> exactly. We're going to have so, big banners for Land yeah. Hub everywhere. Yes. I, you know, I t- I'll tell you, I, I think the interesting part is people probably think, oh, what are these two goofballs, Mark and Duran, going to really teach me? Right. Um, and folks, I kid you not, if you if you think uh, this 497 bucks is, uh, is is way too expensive for an event like this, uh, you're crazy. 
Uh, first off, I, I get to share with with you guys, uh, you know, one one tenth of all the things that I've learned over the over the last four or five years, just on the technical side of marketing. Um, and I and I promise you, it's a wealth of knowledge. And between Mark and I, there's so many things. I think you know, we give we give you guys just one website that you may have never heard of to to make your life more efficient. That's worth every penny of five hundred bucks. Oh so, yeah, I mean, you do you do one deal because of this. Yeah, uh, you know, Land Geek Bootcamp. It's yeah. it, it's 10 times the investment. So um, your ROI on your time and your commitment, your money is going to be off the hook. I can't even calculate it. So enough about Vegas. May 30th and 31st, put it on your calendar. Contact the office, um, 888-620-5742, and we'll get you out a link and get you booked. And uh, we have a block of rooms at a special room rate. So don't miss it. All right, enough about Vegas. What are we going to talk about today? Well, before we get into it, I just thought, you know what, I'd do a little self-promotion. Actually, it's like a family self-promotion. Um, I had shared it with Mark. Uh, my brother-in-law just uh, released a movie. Actually, it's at the Dallas Film Festival this week, um, and it's called the movie's called Produce. Uh, I think the domain name is improduce.com. I think you'll watch if you type in YouTube. It's a really cool uh, film, and uh, it's based on a little boy that's got Down syndrome. So, uh, but my brother-in-law was the uh, writer and director of the film, and uh, it's getting it's getting rave reviews at the Dallas Film Festival. So, if you guys get a chance, take a peek at it. Really cool film. Uh, make sure you have some uh, tissue next to you when you watch the preview because it's pretty cool. So that's cool. That's cool. All right, that that could be your tip of the week. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I am I am produce dot com. I am produce dot com. So, um, so, all right. So, what are we talking about? We're talking about partnerships. Yes. We haven't yes. Ta- we haven't talked about partnerships at all. And the reason we haven't talked about partnerships at all, because I don't like the idea of partnerships. Yep. But that Mark, being said, sometimes they're necessary evil. Correct. And I, Mark and I talked about this earlier. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really interesting in the, in, the, in the world of business. Obviously, you do everything you can to stay away from a partner because it just it's, it's too many cooks in the kitchen causes a problem. And, uh, and the, the nature, uh, you know, the nature of, of a human being is, is to, to have a different business decision than the other guy. And that's that's why you always have conflicts when you have a partner. Um, Mark, Mark and I have worked together on projects. I wouldn't ever call us partners, but we've actually been partners and pretty good partners on, on many occasions. But it's because Mark and I, you know, it's it's like when you're working on projects like Dumb and Dumber. You know, we you know, <laughs> we go into a project uh, just clueless and we just we just figure our way through it. So, um, but you know, when you're when you're getting into a to a, a land deal, um, and you know, Mark Mark can elaborate a little bit more. But when you're getting into a land deal, and and you know, let's say let's say that you you find a foreclosure and something's you know you, you every every deal is unique, right? So you find something that's that that needs ten thousand dollars in twenty four hours or thirty six hours, whatever it is, and you. You, you don't have the money, but you know the deal's there. Um, sometimes you have to have a partner. And so the question the question goes to, well, how do I structure the relationship? How do I structure the deal? Um, and that's kind of what Mark and I wanted to walk you guys through today. And again, it's not just land. It's just, it pertains to anything in life. If there's a deal on the table and you know you can make money, maybe you can buy a car and you, can, and you know the car's worth more money, um, but the guy needs the money right away and the deal's clean. Um, you just need someone to help you. We want to give you guys ideas on how to put those together because it is it, it partners sometimes are necessary. And like Mark said, they are necessary evils that that sometimes um, when you venture there, you can make money. I mean, All right, but I do I do want to differentiate between a partner and an investor because yeah. the scenario you just described, you can get an investor, and those can be great, right? Because a partner is really more involved in the daily machinations of the business and they're going to have a say where we market this what the pricing how we're going to price it and that's a different thing altogether yes. than going to a investor and say you're going to make a 15 percent return on your money if we do this deal together I, I i agree and and that's let's call it an investment partner investment and I, partner okay and then when i when i say that i mean I mean, we're talking, I'm talking like a one-off situation. Again, talking about unique deals that we put together. Um, not, a, not a bit, not a business. Forget right. that, you know, take away the business aspect of it. I'm talking about a one-off deal where you find a piece of property 
that you can make money on. So how do you structure, how do you solve the, that partnership problem? You know, yes, the, yes, they're an investor, but if someone's got money and you don't have a track record, generally speaking, they become more of an more than just an invest, investor, they become an investment partner. I and, see, I see. And, and they take, you know, 40% of the, of the profit or whatever, and they become a partner in that deal. So I'm not, Mark and I don't like someone to come in, and it's funny because, you know, Mark and I are, we both have our certain business models. Like I'm, I'm working on a mining project. I haven't asked Mark to come into my mining project because that's not Mark's cup of tea. Mark's, you know, Mark's building this amazing, you know, project and, and, uh, and, and the land geek that shares a, a lot of information with people. That's not my cup of tea and he's doing really well. So he's not asking me to come in because that's what Mark knows. That's not what I know. So, um, so there, there it just goes to show you that, that you don't always, you don't need that partner, so to speak, in your business, but you do need investment partners at certain points uh, in your life when you're working on, on one-off projects. Right. Now, yeah, but you know, there are, there are situations where a partner can really w work out. And now, the reason I don't like partnerships, generally speaking, is because it's like a marriage, right? Marriages are tough. And having a partner is tough because it's, you've got to communicate. Um, and for most people, like the, we don't want to have to go to another person and ask, is this okay, right? Like it always annoys me when I'm going to make a decision. Oh, wait, I got to go to my wife first. I can't make that decision on my own. Um, I would never say that to her. Okay, so I, she, luckily she doesn't listen to the podcast. But, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like if you're married, it's tough. And so with a part, but if you have the right partner. So, for example, Duran's a marketing genius, right? And I might be a financial genius. That could be a good partnership. And if we look in back on some of the best companies in the world, it always there's always two, right? Jobs and Wozniak, uh, the Google guys. What is Sergey Sergey and uh, the other guy, right? <laughs> yeah, you got I forget. But you know you got Gates and Balmer. You, so you know Balmer was more the marketing guy. Gates was the developer. Um, and so you see all these examples with these big companies, it always started with two. Yeah. Now, eventually there's, you know, one guy kind of has to take a back seat in those partnerships, which is very difficult to do. There's always, you always kind of needed that alpha, but in the, our business, you could have an actual business partner where, you know, you're focused on acquisitions. And your partner is only focused on the marketing aspect. The conflicts occur when you start going into their realm and they start going into your realm, which happens a lot if you don't find the right partner and the right fit, which is, which is really difficult to do. But the investor partner is a whole different ball game. So Dran, walk us through like an example of where you would need an investor in, in a certain situation. I'll I'll walk through a, a, a situation that Mark and I went through together. Um, you know, I I was 21, 22, getting into these land deals, and and basically uh, my career was sort of catapulted with Mark coming in and buying 500 lots in Taos, New Mexico, um, and then uh, you know me finding a way to you know get some of those lots back at a at a price. I couldn't I couldn't buy 30 lots. I had to buy all 500. Right. So Mark, Mark would give me, you know, Mark gave me 20 or 30 or 40 lots, whatever, at the price point that he paid. Um, so I and I couldn't do without Mark. So and that and that partnership, that was again, that was kind of a one off deal. But still, it was more of a long term process as well. And then going back to our situation in Nevada, I needed Mark. So when we went to Nevada, we, we negotiated on, you know, our 50,000 plus acres of land that we purchased. Mark was a very good. Uh, uh, what's the word? Um, he he understood finance and structure a lot better than I did um, when it came to putting this together. You know how we would how we would structure the the note and the terms and and negotiating the the dollar per acre. That was March deal. I was the guy who was like, hey, I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna find the surveyors. I'm the I'm the I'm gonna get it done. I'm gonna make it happen. And 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 you know there was a time where uh, in 2007 where they put a moratorium. Uh, on land and Mark was like, dude, I can't find a survey. I'm like, Mark, it's simple. Let me find you. Here's his name. Get it done. Right. You know, like Mark knew that I, my, my, my strengths and my gifts were 
I, I'm not afraid to pick up the phone and call 50 people. Like you can tell me, you can give me 50, 50 no's and I'll call that 51st guy and have no problem trying to, you know, trying to figure out what, what, you know, what to do. March the same way, but March, March, you know, he, his, his mind was at that point was very finance focused. And so together him and I worked really well. And so it, it was like for me that, you know, he was the perfect co-founder. I was the perfect co-founder, you know, right. like how do we work together and make these deals work? So, um, so that's, that's an example. I mean, I could, I, there's, there's various projects that I've worked on that have been successful where I've had someone that I, you know, and, and me now, me now having sort of a, a, a background of, you know, sort of in my mind, an A to Z understanding of business. It's really cool because there's still a lot of things I don't, I don't understand very well, but well enough to be dangerous and well enough to go, Hey, um, I, I really need help in this area. And I know that that's your expertise. Right. And, and, and the thing is, I mean, for being honest, no one in this world, I don't care who you are. I don't care how talented, how smart, how successful, no one gets to a place of success all by themselves. Right. No one does. You're, there's always going to be some deficit that you have in business. And there's always going to be someone out there that can help you with that. And that's why I think, you know, a mentor is so important to be able to help you identify those deficits and, and help you find solutions to them and, and catapult you to the next level without you kind of, you know, being stuck in the muck and trying to figure it out and, you know, doing this and then getting stuck and doing that and getting stuck. Because when you have someone who's been through it and done it all, then you can really kind of get to that next level much more quickly. And that's what a mentor can do or a partner or even an investor. They, they can help you with where you might need help. And so when you like, you know, in Duran's case, like he was a thousand times more resourceful than I could have ever been. And, you know, in areas where I was much more uh, conservative, Duran was like, no, this is going to, this is going to work. Trust me. And, uh, and it did. So, and I did trust him, but at the time, like, I remember just kind of being freaking out like, Oh my gosh, this is a lot of money. This is a lot of debt. Why are we doing this? And so you kind of, you know, it's nice to have that person who plays devil's advocate, but you also need the other person on the other side of it saying, you know, look at the possible return we're going to make, you know, don't kill this deal based on this or this or that. So, you know, that, and you, know yeah. you know, going back to, you know, it's funny, Mark, because we talked about, I mean, one of the deal, one of the first deals you ever did where we didn't work together was a deal that wasn't very successful. Do you remember that? that? Which one? For you. The uh, New Mexico deal? Nope. Arizona? Nope. East Coast. Treasure Lake. <laughs> oh, gosh. That was, a, yeah. So, that so was let's be honest, that was one of the first deals. And I was, I, I, I'm going to tell you guys, I was a little hurt. That Mark went out, flew out, and did all this work and this real pretty place. I see all these pictures, and he didn't call me. And I was like, you know what? I felt kind of like Mark was like my big bro, my big older geeky brother. And I just <laughs> thought, you know what? I, Mark, he's definitely going to call me and ask me to get involved in this project. And he didn't. And you know what? I I, I got to say, Mark, if you brought me into this, I bet you I could have marketed our way out of that, that project. But no, you know what? There is no way. That was such a disaster. First <laughs> of all, I negotiated for three years with that POA. <laughs> <laughs> three years to get the lots down to almost nothing. So, yeah. you know, yeah, you're probably right. I should have split that deal, <laughs> but I've learned my lesson since then. You know, you know, the, you know, so I learned two lessons from that deal. Number one was never buy in a, in a POA with huge, like real big uh, assessments. Yeah. Fees. And number two was, you know, don't go into a big deal without Duran. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I tell all my friends that now that if you guys have a big deal, call me. Yeah. Uh, Cause I, I don't have the money, but I'll have a friend that has it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, so uh, let's say, but say for example, like you do find a big deal and you don't have the money, you know, unlike single family homes or traditional real estate, you can't go to a, uh, you know, hard money lender, right? You can't go to a conventional lender. Banks and hard money lenders typically don't want land that doesn't have an asset, an underlying asset, right? That they can quickly sell. So land, that, what, that's what makes land a little bit more difficult. It also keeps our competition much, much lower is that you typically, you either have to have a line of credit, you have to have an investor or former syndicate to do these bigger deals. Yeah. And 
that's you know that's just the way it is so you know there's been deals where you know cash is king you've got to have that person or investor or somebody there that when you do find that big hundred thousand two hundred thousand dollar deal that you know you're going to make three four or five times on they can help you do that and pull the trigger they make a great return you have your home run and everybody's happy i think the challenge in that especially when you're first starting is i don't have any uh you know track record why why would an investor invest this money with me so Duran, how do you how do you get over that if you're if you don't have a track record how do you get money uh, you know that's that's a, it's, it's, that's a great question mark the the fact of the matter is you you need to um, if you're an honest person we've talked about it in the past and 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 you know how to you, you know how to build rapport with people and 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 how to get people to trust you um, you're gonna have to sit down and share and be open with them about the deal, right? I mean, if you're looking, it's easier for me to go get an investor and pay them 15% than it is for a guy who's got a deal who's never done a deal before to get an investor at a 15, at, you know, at 15%. Right. Um, meaning, meaning I've built enough rapport and and trust with people that I can get money for for less, if that makes sense. So it's like your credit report. It's right. like if you've got a 520 credit score or you've got an 800 credit score, um, your bank is going to loan money to a guy with 800 credit score and at, at a very low interest rate. Why? Because because their credit rating is high and they're and they're trustworthy. Right. At, at the 520 credit score, you're going to need a lot of money down and you're going to have a higher interest rate. So so it goes to, the same thing goes back to us as business people. Like when we walk into a deal, like. Where, where are you on that scale of, of, of trust? Have you been successful? What's your track record? What's your history? Have you burned people before? Uh, you know, those are all things you need to think about when you walk into a deal with somebody and, and know, hey, like, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to gingerly walk around that question or this question because I don't have a past or a track record in land, but I've learned enough to know that I have a valuable piece of property in front of me that I need $10,000 for, and I can sell in a week and a half or three weeks or five weeks for you know, a, for a $20,000 profit. And so how do I get this investor to trust? And, and this is where you go, hey, a smart investor that understands real estate, you're not gonna get a guy who's a, a software uh, investor that's gonna invest in land that's never done any real estate deals before, invest. G generally, it's not gonna happen. You're gonna get a guy who, who knows what he's getting in, in, involved with. Unless, right. of course, it goes, hey, Duran, I trust you. You're a real estate guy. You know the equations. I don't. You make it happen. Here's my here's my check. Um, but in most cases, you're going to have a guy who's savvy enough to understand real estate, and, and you're going to take that deal to them, and you're going to say, hey, here you go. And I'm going to have – you may have to give up a little more on this first deal. So right. if, it's a, if it's a $20,000 profit, you may have to give up $10,000 $10, of that $20,000 profit or maybe even more. But, you know, what's you – know, but, but then you're building your track record. And your yep. trust with that investor, and they'll do more deals with you. And, and it goes back. One of my very first loans that I made, uh, or, or or that I that I took out on a on a property. And gosh, I don't know what deal it was for, but I think I think it was for our first Nevada deal. Mark and I right. needed Mark and I needed like thirty five thousand in cash um, for a deal. And I was so I had so much money tied up into these land auctions for years, or for for the first year year and a half that I I didn't have thirty five you know, thousand laying around to put this, make this Nevada deal happen. So I borrowed, I'm sorry, 25 grand. So I borrowed 25 grand and I guaranteed the guy a 35% return on his money in one year. Okay. Wow. That's how confident I was. Now, now any stupid guy would be like, dude, 35%, that's, an, you're an idiot. Well, I needed the money and I needed to, I needed to be very aggressive in my, right. in my ass. But if you're making 300%, yeah, 35% exactly. is not a big deal. Right. Nothing. So, so yeah. And from a practical standpoint, look, if you find, I mean, the real value in our business is finding the deal. Yeah, I guarantee you, if you find a deal pennies on the dollar, there's someone on the other side of that deal that will invest in it. You know, and worst case scenario, come to Duran and I, we'll invest in it. We understand yeah. the business. But yeah. if you didn't want to do that, you could still find an investor that would understand, oh, wow, you just bought a piece of property for that much? Yeah. Like they would, I, I think it's not as hard as you would think. What I would do from a practical standpoint is create an executive summary showing them, the, you know, the story of the land, how you're going to market the land, what you're going to sell it for, how you're going to sell it, and, and spell out for them exactly how they're going to get paid back and when. And yeah. that will, even if you're a newbie, you're more likely to get money that way 
than if you just say, oh, I found this great deal. Um, and don't fully explain all the parameters and the risks. You've got to you've got to spell out. Okay, here's the risk in this deal too. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, I, it's funny you say that because one of one of the things as a young guy, I never really, I do, I never realized, um, I never, I never realized risk until I got older because everything I put my money into. I remember my uncle always used to say, "Dude, you have a golden horseshoe up your butt." <laughs> what do you mean? He's like, dude, everything that you invest in turns to gold. I said, man, I, I, you know, I hope that's the case. I get older, but at, at 26, 27 years old, I was very well off. I was, I would say I was pretty stupid because all I knew was how to take a piece of land, market it and sell it and make a really good return. But there wasn't, there wasn't a, it wasn't rocket science and right. involved in it. And yeah, there was a lot of knowledge and understanding and how to put deals together and, and, and relationships and everything else involved in that. But, but I just felt like I, so I didn't understand risk because I didn't have a mentor and Mark and I were, were just everything we, everything we, we, we bought turned to gold. And, right. and so we didn't really look at the situation. So then I made a second acquisition in 05 or 06, I think 05, for another 10,000 acres after Mark. And I remember Mark and I talked about it. Mark's like, I'm not interested. Right. The, and, yeah. And, and there was a, there was a reason. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't like it because we couldn't split it. Exactly. So we knew this area was, was what, well, at, we didn't know. We, at, we just knew it was harder to split. And, and, and then I think a year right. after, a year after I closed, basically County's like, sorry, you're not, we, they put in laws in place that made it literally impossible to subdivide the land. And I was like, Oh my gosh. Like, and here I am, I, and I, this is the first deal that I've ever brought investors. And here's the worst part about it. Those investors were my family members. Oh, so, yeah. So now I've got my, I've got, you know, capital from, from my sister, my mom, my uncle, and I'm, and I'm thinking I'm going to make everybody money. Like right. that's, I, I, I wasn't, it, it wasn't even for me. It wasn't a selfish, I want to do this. It was like, we can't, we can't not make a three or 400% return. This is a no brainer. Well, right. I failed to tell that you know, the family members that, Hey, there's, there's, there's some risk in the deal. Um, I I'm, I'm this, this now it, it kind of entails the mining project. Um, so there's, there's a potentially good return for everybody, but at the same time I had to literally, I, this is no joke. I think I dumped out of my pocket, probably a quarter million into the project just in cash alone in holding costs in seven years. Right. Um, or eight years. So it, it was, it, and, and here's what's crazy. It was way beyond what I should have done, but because I had this burden of family's money on my back, I couldn't let it go. Yeah. Um, and so that's, I, I got burned the hard way because I didn't think about risk prior to making this acquisition. Now, granted, I'm going to end up probably doing quite well with the mining project. Then we have another pot uh, um, uh, potential alternative energy project that we're we're working on right now on that same ground. Um, but it's just one of those things where where if you don't think about it prior, it it can be a, a problem. So yeah. and, and generally speaking, I you know, I don't like to get family and finances mixed together because yep. you know it's not it, it makes Thanksgiving awkward. Hey, how's that project going? Yeah, uh, you know. But um, so if you if you I would always have family as your last resort. Try to go to investor. And in today's day and age, with crowdfunding sites and so many different avenues where there's people that want to invest in real estate and want to you know, look for passive income on investments and might understand land, this is a great way to go. And obviously, you can always come to Duran and I because we understand the business if you need funding. Yeah. So that's always there on the table as well. So we're at that point where I'm going to ask Duran for his tip of the week. I, lo I love putting you on the spot. You know, actually, it. funny enough, I actually have a couple of good ones this week. Not one, but in multiple. Right. Um, we talked about, okay, actually, I have, uh, I have a couple of different ideas. So one, Mark talked about executive summary or a business plan in place. And I don't know if I, did I mention uh, liveplan.com? No, let me check it out. Okay, so liveplan.com. Look for a coupon code. I'm a big coupon code fan. So always, whenever you're searching on the internet, whether it's GoDaddy or anything, just search coupon code. You'll find, you know, you'll find LifePlan. I think you get your first month for $9.95. Basically, LifePlan allows you to go and build a business plan. And I built one in one day for one of my projects. And it turned out really good. Wait a second. Is it leadership development resources for the 21st century? 
No, no, no. Um, it's not live. It's L L I V E P L A N. I think is what it's called. Oh, live plan. Live plan. Oh, okay. Yes, live plan. And um, oh, okay. Now I'm there. Okay, write okay. your business. Write your plan with the number one business planning company. Yep. So anyway, check that. Like, check out live plan. L I V E P L A N dot com. Um, if you want to put a business plan together, again, not just for land, for anything you're doing. It's a great website, a great resource to put a business plan together and do it in a day. Um, it gives you examples of what, what information to put. They ask you the questions like, what's your marketing, what's your go-to-market strategy? And then they give you examples of other companies that have utilized that. So it's a really, that's, that's a really cool resource. Um, on the, on the co-founder question or the, you know, you know, people always ask, well, where do I find a co-founder? Well, it, funny enough today in today's digital age, there's a couple of websites that are out there that help you find co-founders. Um, there's founder to be F O U N D E R the number two and then B E founder to be.com. Founder to be.com. Be um, these are, these are basically websites that you would put in information looking for the right co-founder. So whether you have capital and you're looking for someone without capital, but has a software background, this is where you can find co-founders. I don't know if, if any of these work or not. Um, there's another website called founderdating.com. Sounds kind of silly. Huh. But uh, but I think same situation. I think these are like you know, um, it, it allows you to find that co-founder. I'm I'm you know I'm in a position right now where I actually would love to find a co-founder for LandHub.com because I I I have so much going on and I and I have a lot of focus on LandHub. But I would love like a like a like a large software guy to come in. But they're they're hard to find. So I've been looking around these websites searching, but check them out. You can check check out find a co-founder in in uh, in Google, you know, and you'll and ten sites will pop up. But those are a couple of them for you. There's CollabFinder.com. So, so pretty wow. pretty cool, pretty cool. That's cool. That's cool. All right. So my tip of the week is going to be how to get paid, right? So I think I've talked about this before, but I want to talk about it one more time, and that is Stripe. I love Stripe, and um, it's a great way to easily get paid uh, and you know they, in their terms of service you can't they won't let you sell land no money down or sell real estate no money down but that's not what we're doing so as long as it's understood and stripe understands that you can work with them it's simple pricing right there's no complex fee structures three percent straight across the board it's, right it's yes yeah, 2.9 percent plus 30 cents uh successful charge there's no monthly fees there's no refund costs there's no hidden fees um it's fantastic and you can hire a stripe developer i've got a guy for 50 bucks they'll make up your form you can get you can take uh recurring payments on this it's really nice it's a really great way to get paid so Check out I, Stripe. I use it, Mark, on LandHub. Do you know that? Did, oh, yeah. Is it, is it working? Is it great? Uh, yeah, it's perfect. I mean, you know, I've got several people with subscriptions that, that I get paid monthly, and it's really simple. All right. So, great. Great. I love yeah. it. Well, listen, I want to remind everybody, book Vegas. Uh, again, call the office, 888-620-6742. We're going to email a link to book your rooms. Um, and look, leave us some love. Let us know if you like the web, the leave us a comment on iTunes and let us know if you like the podcast. It takes like two minutes, but it means the world to us. Kind of keeps us motivated to keep doing this. And uh, look, if you want to buy some wholesale land, go to reserveland.com. Give Duran some love. If he doesn't have anything for you, go to frontierpropertiesusa.com. I bet I might have something for you. And look, go to thelandgeek.com. And uh, download the Passive Income Blueprint, get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes, and get this always informative and engaging podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. Duran, are we good? Uh, I think we're good, Mark. All right. Thanks, buddy. You going to be around next week? I'll be here. All right. All right. Hey, this is Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.